York is installing clean solar energy on schools, hospitals, firehouses, and government facilities across our neighborhoods. With the release of One City Built to Last, Mayor Bill de Blasio outlined a climate change action plan to bring clean energy to our cities and to transform our buildings for a low carbon future. Buildings actually are responsible for the majority of the emissions in New York City. So to improve and reduce our carbon footprint, we are installing solar power 100 megawatts by the year 2025. Installing solar power is part of our overall plan to reduce our city emissions, our greenhouse gas emissions, 80% by the year 2050. We are working to achieve the cleanest air of any major U.S. city, and we are leading by example with our public buildings. So far, New York City has installed solar on 52 public buildings, and we have 100 more locations in the pipeline. So this solar PV installation is one of 24 that we've built in partnership with the New York Power Authority over the past year, totaling over five megawatts of solar installed capacity. These 24 solar systems will save the city $1.2 million in energy costs each year and reduce our greenhouse gas emissions by 2,000 metric tons annually. So by installing solar power on our largest rooftops like the school here, we are cost effectively scaling up our clean energy resources, which both reduces our energy costs and our carbon footprint. So as we expand our clean energy program, we'll be building more and more solar systems on publicly owned sites, bringing clean and affordable energy to the city. Today we're here in Staten Island at Tottenville High School. This is one of 24 rooftop solar photovoltaic systems that are installed across the five boroughs. So at this site, we have a little over 1,700 modules. Uh, in total, these add up to about 532 kilowatts of installed capacity. So the system at this site will offset the total annual energy use of the school by about 34%. So this is a rooftop mounted system. It's self-ballasted, which means that we don't make any roof penetrations. And this helps us in that we're not uh, voiding any existing warranties. We're not increasing the likelihood of any leaks in the building. It's much lower impact and allows us to roll out these projects a little bit more quickly. They're relatively easy to put together. They just scale up with size. So you have a rack component, which is ballasted by the blocks. And then you install the modules on top and wire it all together back down to the basement. It takes a lot of time just because it's large, but the complexity of it's pretty low. So having solar panels installed on the roofs of school buildings is a really unique thing. So it's a great way for students to understand renewable energy sources and clean energy. So we do wanna take strides to connect what's happening on the rooftops with the classrooms through curriculum, having you know, fun activities that engage them in this kind of new science. So green technology is a really interesting emerging field and one that could potentially employ a lot of our students in the future. So it's a, it's a fantastic thing to be able to have them see this at an early age to get them excited about renewable energy. So our solar arrays will engage the next generation of science leaders. So we are hoping to create environmental stewards uh, by doing all these different solar energy projects throughout the city of New York. The future of cities could be on this roof behind me, where there are over 9,000 solar panels on 22 acres of buildings. But right now, all these panels only power 6% of this apartment complex's energy. So I wanna know, how do we bring more solar power to cities? To find out, I'm visiting Stytown Solar, a project that doubled Manhattan's solar capacity. We're a 70 year old community, and if we can do it, I know that anybody can do it. Stytown Solar is a huge project that covers the Stuyvesant Town apartment complex on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. The project includes 9,761 solar panels. That, plus investments in energy efficiency and composting, have lowered this complex's footprint by 15%. Stytown is owned by investment firm Blackstone, which put $11 million into the solar project. I'm curious to see how the project works and how other buildings can follow their lead. How long does something like this have to run to actually offset the production 
cost of just the materials we're looking at? About 180 days. And you're past that now? Yep, well past that. All right, we're in the green. We, we're in the green, that's right, we're in the green. <laughs> Kelly Voss is the CEO of Beam Living, which runs the Stuyvesant Town Complex, which was built in 1947 and it's home to over 27,000 New Yorkers. So how does it work? How are you getting the energy from these panels into this building? Pretty simple. They come down when it's sunny. It's a little cloudy today, which is okay. When it's sunny, you can actually go on my phone and watch how much energy is being created. And then it goes right into here and back down into the main panel in this building. And then does that lower your bill that you're paying for energy that you would have to buy off of the market? There's a couple ways to do it. One of the ways is the way you described where we consume that energy. And when you can couple that with batteries, it becomes very powerful. Batteries and residential in New York City is a little challenging now. We're very bullish that over time that will change. Another way, which is the way we do it, is we provide the electricity back to Con Edison so that they can use it and it reduces the amount of energy that New York City needs to use. When you look at different parts of the country, like there's areas like Arizona that are sunny 100% of the time. And here we're a little bit more touch and go. Does that really lower the efficiency of these because we don't have sun every day of the year? It's definitely a lower efficiency. It doesn't make it not worth it. You spent millions of dollars to make this. And so did you crunch the numbers and think that like something like solar panels, even though it's only lowering, you know, your energy consumption by 6%, Correct. was a good investment for you? If it's not a actual return on investment with you know percentage return on that money sometimes there's just a return on investment and it's not always dollars sometimes it's about doing the right thing and sometimes about thinking forward in what will be required both legally and ethically in 10 years in June 2019, New York State passed legislation that requires electricity production to come from 70% renewable energy by 2030 and for all new buildings to include solar panels or green roofs. As of 2018, only 1% of New York's energy generation comes from solar, while nationally in 2019, almost 2% 2 of energy generation came from solar. We have a goal which, which is called the Solar Plus Decade, which is basically to get from 2% where we are now to getting to 20% by 2030. That's Gilbert Campbell. He's been working in solar for over 10 years and is the CEO of Volt Energy and on the board of the Solar Energy Industries Association. I think the thing about solar is that it's so perfect. It's a free energy coming from the sun, but at the same time, you have these drawbacks. You know, the sun doesn't shine all the time. There's clouds, there's nighttime, and it's hard to store it. So how do you see solar overcoming those big limitations on how much power it can produce? Energy storage, I think, coupled with solar is, is a great marriage. The energy storage technology has gotten a lot better, and you're seeing more utilities that are investing in energy storage projects. What do you think is the future of rooftop solar? It seems like a lot of your projects have been on rooftop. Rooftops work very well because a lot of times property owners really have no use of it. And then solar fits perfectly there. A lot of times, you know, you can't see it from the street level for those that don't want to see panels. I'm biased. I think they look beautiful. The National Renewable Energy Laboratory did a study that said if we were to utilize even just small rooftops in the U.S., that would be enough solar power to cover a year's worth of electricity for up to 121 million American households. And just adding them onto something that we're not using anyway. <laughs> They're just sitting there. I know we're talking about rooftops, but our nation is also designed around parking and, and cars. So, you know, that's another area where when you look at parking spaces and solar carports is another way where we can also get to more solar. 10 years from now, we have 20% of the grid. Is there a situation where we have like solar panels everywhere and we go, oh God, what have we done? Just to kind of put you at ease, in order to provide enough solar to power the US, it would require 0.6% of available land. I think that it, that is a little bit overstated as far as the amount of available space that we would need for, for solar to really make it. And that, you know, that's the power to provide all of our electric usage. From speaking with Kelly and Gilbert, I now understand how solar power is just a piece of the pie of decarbonizing our energy system. If we want to have a chance at preventing the worst impacts of climate change, we also need policy, energy storage, a modernized grid, and more. Batteries are also an area where we need to see advancements, and I'd love to do an entire video exploring that topic. But for now, that's all for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.